the spirit guides made in this insight today is that going through your life without healing the trauma of your past will cloud your present moment. You will constantly be bracing yourself for something that could happen because of something that happened long ago. That fear of the future will not allow you to be at peace with yourself until you heal it once and for all. It is distorting your ability to trust yourself, causing you to be depressed and anxious. If your life feels like either one of these, then writing 15 minutes a day in your journal will be a lifesaver for you. This is how you will see your future, what has caused you to have anxiety about your future. All right, Ray. So who do we have with us tonight, we Ray? We have Joy and Cat Angel. Isn't that a great name? Who is it? Cat Angel. Cat Angel. All, all cats well, are angels. They are little angels. <laughs> We're glad to have you, Cat and Joy. Rebecca. Veronica. Rebecca Gann. Rebecca. Okay. Yeah. Now, Rebecca Gann. Okay, okay. Yes. Um, right. Okay, so... We, if any questions you guys have about this, this is a, I got a lot of emails about this. I got a lot of people at, at asking me questions about what we were going to be doing tonight. Some of them may not be on with us right now, but they're anxious. They're, they're anxious, anxious. They're anxious to get here. <laughs> they have, they, anxious means it suggests anxiety, okay, being All anxious. Right. And Stacy Bowers here. Stacy, you had a great birthday, I saw. She did. Howdy from Texas. Well, howdy, darling. <laughs> and Barbara Ann Sinowitz, she's here too. Wow, we have a big we, crowd here. We tonight. have a great cap crowd. And we want your questions tonight. About it, anxiety. Yeah, anxiety about the future and how it's how you feel it going on in your life. Where you need help. You if you need have a question for your guides, let us know what it is and they they will answer you tonight. Stacy's in Georgia, she says tonight. Wow. Georgia. She's been traveling a lot. Wow. A world traveler. Yeah. You know what I don't understand about anxiety? What's that, Ray? It's repetitious. Yeah. I mean it torments you. Okay. This is we're getting near the end of the year again and people are anxious about well what's twenty twenty gonna be like. See that's the guides know when to bring these things up, don't they? They picked these topics. Yeah, weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. So Everybody's anxious about, wow, what's what's 2020? In, uh, in, what, what does it have in store for me? Well, probably the same thing that 2019 did and 2018. And, 20, and, and you were all worried about that. And the same things are going to happen again in the coming year. So why don't people just look back and see how those same things worked out in previous years? Well, we're going to work on that with you guys. You, again, bring your questions and let your guides talk to you about it. You know, no one knows you better than your spirit guides do. They didn't get the amnesia when you came here. You did. So they can see what you cannot, all right? Okay, so we're here to, to, to serve you in that way, all right? And so, Patty Friedman is with us. Patty, very nice to have all of you tonight. So happy to be with you guys. Okay, again, it's about anxiety about the future. What are you anxious about? What is it that bothers you about the future? And then let your guides get in there and help you with it. Let's see those questions start to show up. So, Ray, what, what other questions, what, what other things did you research today about this? I researched the official name of anxiety, fear of the future. It's okay. fear of passing time, and it's called chronophobia. Chronophobia. Like chron fear, yeah. fear of something chronic. Well, no, chrono, like, like time. Oh, oh. Chronophobia, the fear of passing time. Passing time. Fear of the future. Right. The future's coming. Oh. Like like time is, is passing you by. Right. Like you're going to miss something, an opportunity, or or something that's going to happen that, that you fear you've got no control over. Okay? And you may not have control over something that's coming in your future. You may not have control over it. But that's not the point. The only control you really have is when you are present, when you are in the present moment. 
okay? When you're not over here and you're just in this world and you feel like, like this is all there is and no one is there to help you, not really. You're alone when you feel this, okay? When in reality, where you came from, this part of you that first came here, I'm not talking about this part. I'm this is the part that acclimated to this world. But I'm talking about the part that you, the part where you came from, where you came from and your guides came with you, that you remember that. But since this happened, this amnesia took over and it kind of, you know, caused you to retreat. Okay, what do we have, Ray? We have a lot of anxious people. I Everybody oh, feels it. This time of year, they do. Yeah. Okay, Kat says... I was just thinking about today's topic earlier in the week. I have habits that came from negative things that happened to me a long time ago. How can I heal from the past and stop having anxiety and distrust about the future? Yeah, boy. That, you know, you nailed it. What you said really hits home with almost everybody, Kat. All right? So your spirit guides are here with us now, your spirit guides and angels, and they know you better than anyone, Kat, and they're going to speak with you about this. You're going to have a conversation with them, and here they go. Kat, these habits you have controlling you now are rooted in years gone by a long time ago. It's amazing how traumatic things that happen in our childhood or in our early years still have an effect over how we feel, what we think about, and what we fear. The only way you can stop this pattern is to go back and look at each one of those things that happened individually and write them down so you can study them now. Once you have them on paper in front of you, now you can study them. Look back at when they happened, who was involved, and how that makes you feel. Once you can explain your feelings, you will realize that you no longer need them to control you in the present. There's something that happened back there a long time ago that if you allow them to become the habits of today, they will become your destiny tomorrow. And really what it, what's going on with you, Kat, is you're frozen in a time capsule oh, yeah. of trauma. This is trauma. I know it. <laughs> and I had my share of trauma to resolve after I got away from it, you know, when I was 16 and finally got away from the people causing the trauma for me. It took me a while to, to breathe. See, that's an exercise, you guys. you got to learn how to let go of what has a hold of you. It's a time capsule that you're frozen in. So what do you do to unfreeze it? You start moving around. You start letting the, the stress and the, and, the, and the tension stress, the tension, the time capsule that's frozen, so it can begin to melt. It begins to dissipate, and it begins to lose its grip on you.
But you know what? The only way I was able to do it when I was a kid, as I talked about from my childhood at seven years old, when I started to journal writing and nobody knew it, I didn't even know that's what it was called. I had my instinct, my, my guidance pointed me that way. So I could begin to understand what was going on with me. It was amazing. You guys, I came out of a childhood that I almost didn't make it through. And I came out a superstar. I'm not kidding. Everything I did after I got out of that childhood was golden. And it was from staying present and learning this higher learning I was getting from my guides all the time and writing it down so I could understand this. Because this was certainly not something I could have talked to anyone about. That's why the journal, you know about the journal. Here she goes. There's the journal. I hope you guys have this because this is a specific journal designed to pull you out of that trauma, out of that past or out of that future that you keep going out to and you keep, you know, focusing on and letting it scare you because of what happened in your past. Right? You were little when it happened. It was scary. You, you, you didn't stand a chance. That's why you, when you start writing this stuff down, right now, Kat, what you want to do is write down what's worrying you, what's bothering you, what's causing anxiety in you, and start writing down what it is. And just put your entries in, and just in part three, just do that in part three. Part three is the easiest part of the journal. It's your daily 15-minute meeting you have with your spirit guides. When you do your writing, your spirit guides are with you. You want to know why? Because when you cut out everything else and you take that 15 minutes to write down what's going on with you in your life, you're present. And when you're present, your spirit guides are with you. That's all it takes. You don't have to go chase down your spirit guides and say, are you there? Tell me your name. You, you don't have to go through all that nonsense. You just have to become present and all of a sudden it will start to flow. This is how you're going to heal it. And if you do this for one month, just for one month, and you keep putting in once a day, 15 minutes a day, with your spirit guide meeting, you do this work and you talk about what's unusual or out of the ordinary that's going on in your life and document that, write that down. Then, then tell, write down how that felt. And then when you see what you wrote down and how that felt, now you're going to know what you realize. And this is how it's all, all going to start coming out. And then you're going to have only when you realize what you have a realization about what you wrote down and what you felt and you can finally realize it. Do you have the power to take action without the realization? You're powerless. All you did is you wrote down what it was, how it felt, but you didn't finish it. It's time to finish it, you guys. It's time to lay it down. It's time to keep it in chronological order. It's time to do your 15 minutes a day. It's going to change your life. It saved mine. Yeah, you know, when you go back and look at things and you write them down so you can study them, there's a, there's a lesson in everything. There's, there every, is. Every, everything that, there is. Everything that happens it is supposed to teach you something, but yes. most people go back and look and see that what happened to them. Right. They take it personally. Right. That's the, that's the oh, they did this to me. No, maybe they did that for this, you. This is the whole thing. The people that do what they do, they're, they're usually not conscious. Right. So you can't count on them to make any sense about what they did to you. Okay. It's not going to work. So you've got you've got to take the bull by the horns, okay? And you've got to take the action to write down what these things are. And you're not telling on anybody. You're not, you're not gossiping about anybody. You're not doing any of that. You're just writing down what, what happened, what was unusual, out of the ordinary, what happened, what it felt like, truthfully, just from your perspective. And then, bang, you're going to realize what it is. You guys, you need to take this, these steps. Even if you don't have my journal, if you follow those four qualifying questions and do the work 
you will get the journal because this is this has more information in it than what I'm just talking about right now. That that was really that's been well designed and well thought out. Okay, it was a work in progress for over a year before I published it. So there's a lot of good stuff here. Go ahead, Lee. Okay, we got a lot of crap. Uh, Anna May, join us. Hi, Anna May. Anna Monica, May. join us. Hello, Monica. Monica, great to have uh, you. Rebecca Gann says I have anxiety about being abandoned in the future. And it's a two-part question. So. And then what are our thought what are your thoughts about other beings coming in 2020? So other beings. Other beings. Well, I think the other beings are already here. Yeah. I mean, you, you saw them when you're 20 months old. They're always here. Okay, so I think her question is, okay, repeat the question they're, again. They're, they're, they're not connected. I, uh, she wonders about uh, she has anxiety about being abandoned in the future. Right. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. <sighs> That's a tough one, by the way. I don't think that I think that's a common one, you know. Okay, and this is Rebecca, right? Rebecca. Rebecca. Rebecca, your spirit guides are here, and they're going to talk to you about why that abandonment's there. What is that abandonment that Rebecca is feeling that that continues to haunt her? It's a replay of people who have let you down in the past. The best way to combat these feelings of abandonment or possible abandonment in the future is to, every time you begin to feel them, go out of your way to do things around other people. Get together with a friend or multiple friends. Go out and do something that takes your mind off of being alone. Okay. Eventually, you know, eventually it's like the water that goes, that flows over the rock. The, the the abandonment issue is the rock. You would think that the rock is just never going to change. It's a rock. How and water going over it is is it ever going to affect the rock? It wears the rock down. The rock can't stay a rock with the water uh, rolling over it. Eventually, it wears the rock down. Now, what you want, you don't want to be in a situation where you're the water running over your issue you know that stubbornness that that thing that keeps coming back that rock you need to you want that rock to become supple you want it to become flexible you want the rock to relax that's that time capsule that where you're frozen that rock okay you don't want to wait for the water to have to keep going over it and wearing it down that would take you lifetimes to do so what do you do here I go again. You need to start tracking this abandonment thing. And you need to be you need to do it every day. You need to follow up on this on how it's feeling from day to day. Put yourself in a position of abandon a possible abandonment. Example. Go out on a date. Somebody wants to go out with you, go ahead and go. This 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 will press your buttons. Is that that kind of thing will press your buttons. Get a pet, then you're terrified you're going to lose the pet. The pet's going to run away. Abandonment. Okay, test the abandonment issue against this. You've got this now. This is like your superpower. And write down what's going on with you as you throw yourself into trust rather than that feeling of abandonment. What's the worst thing that can happen? That you could be abandoned? Just one more time, just one more time. You can handle that if that's what happens. But you know, you've got you've got your superpower. You're going to write down what really happened, not not oh, this is what happened. No, you're going to write down this. Um, you're going to treat it like something that happened to someone else. You're not going to treat this like it, taking it personally. You're not going to take it personally. You're going to write it in here so you don't do that again. That's where you're hung up. You're hung up because you keep taking it personally right. 
And once you can overcome taking it personally, it'll disappear. Got this thing. It'll disappear. You became now you are back. Okay. All right. Veronica. Veronica. She's worried, uh, wondering about merging her pets with her new relationship in the future. In the future. She's anxious about how the pets and the new relationship are going to get along. Is it like who has to sleep on the porch? <laughs> <laughs> I love your question, Veronica. Now, this is where you bring families together. Veronica's pets, they're her family. Right. She made these, uh, she brought these, peop these people. These people. Little fur people. They are fur people. They're angels. Okay. She brought them into her life and loved them and, and, and raised them up and they love her and she's got this great relationship with them now. And then all of a sudden, somebody came into her life that she never expected, okay? She fortified her life with love only for this significant other to come in. And now how does she do this? Okay, her spirit guides, Veronica's spirit guides, and angels are going to talk to her about that. And here they go, Veronica. Veronica, you use your pets as a way to keep love out. Keep it out? Yeah. You focused on loving them right. because they love you back unconditionally. Now you are entering into a, a conditional relationship, one that may contain compromises in order for everybody to get along. We see that it won't be as hard as you think and that two of the pets will develop a special bond with your new two-legged friend. <laughs> Your new two-legged friend. Okay, so you know how animals are. They take a little time to warm up to whoever comes into the into the pack. Okay. <laughs> so it's a it's a process, right? Right. They want to, they want to protect you. They. That, that's what the pets. You are. are the prior. You are <clears throat> the one they trust. You are the one they have the relationship with. Now he's got to earn that respect and that relationship. It just doesn't happen. You, I mean, you thought you, you were, you've been charmed by him. That happened. So your little pets, you know, what, what is it? Two, she's got two kitty cats, three kitty cats. Well, yeah, two. Dolly, yeah. and then she's got the dog. So, Emma. so two out of four, Veronica. All right. That's not so bad. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anime join Stacy says I'm anxious about continuing to have few people around me who get it few who are spiritually advanced and feeling alone as far as key a key romance and important friendships in your life so condense um Continuing to have few people. Right, the first part is not enough people around her who get it. Right. Who are spiritually aware. Okay. 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 That's, and, a, that's and, the first. Part. And let me let me talk to you for a minute about that. In your particular case, uh, Stacy, you're tough. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. You're tough, and and you're not going to put up with any crap, Stacy. That's where you're at. You've had it with this. So when you talk about this, you really mean it. That happens to be really true with you. So I, um, this, is, this is beyond serious with uh, Stacy. 
she's flat out not putting up with it anymore. So that's going to keep the, you know, the slugs away. It's going to keep the time wasters away. They won't even come near you because I'm telling you, you've got energy or they won't even, they will not enter. <laughs> I, it, I mean, it's kind of good, but at the same time, it's so, it's a, it's, it's a very strong energy that you have. This is particular to you, Stacey, that could scare a lot of people away. All right. You don't scare me away and you don't scare Ray away and you don't scare everyone that, that joins us that know you and love you away. Okay. We can read your energy very clearly, but we can, and I'm not putting you down. I believe me. I, I lived a, a part of my life where I had to be really strong like that to keep these people away from me. So I get where you're coming from, but you need to relax it a little bit. You know, you already have, the, the market cornered on protection. You don't have to protect. You don't have to. You don't have to do it actively because it's already a right. part of you. You've got this down. Okay. This armor. You, right, Ray. What do you call it? Armor. Armor. Right. I did the same thing, Stacy. I get you, but you know, whoo, breathe it out. Breathe it out. Let yourself come back into the picture. You're you're safe, Stacy. Okay. Let's let your guides talk to you about this because you're ready for, to have these people in your life. And I understand that, you know, if they don't, they're not a fit, they're not in. Okay. I know what you mean, but okay, here they go. Stacy, there's a good reason why you don't have a lot of people around you who get it as you say <laughs> they don't seem to have the same spiritual awareness as you do we can tell you that there's an an easy explanation there are a lot of people around you who are spiritually aware or curious. They just don't talk about it at all because they feel ashamed of what others will say about them or think about them. That's the biggest reason why people have trouble finding new friends who are just as spiritually inclined as they are. Isn't that a shame? They're called the silent majority. We did uh, an insight on this that's in the blogs on lindadeer.com website for blogs. If you put in spiritually aware, you will, um, you'll find this blog post about this, the, the, the silent, no, put in silent majority. They didn't say minority. They said, the guide said, the silent majority. The majority of people feel this way and have at least, they, they, they're spiritual or they're curious about it. Okay, they're one or the other, but they're going the right way but they're terrified to share it with anybody. It's a personal thing. So they don't want anyone messing with it. It's too, pre it's too precious for them. They don't want anybody trying to get them to defend it or, or you know, get them to question themselves or you know, trying to, to get them to, um, where people will come in and they'll challenge you. My God's better than your God type of thing. That really gets messed up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So people have seen this since they were little. They don't want to be challenged. They know what they feel. They know what their truth is. And they don't want that to happen. They don't want anything tainting it, testing it, messing with it. Okay. So that's why you don't know who they are. And a lot of you guys are going through that where you don't know who that spiritually aware person is. That would be an awesome friend, 
a timely friend, all right? Because you want to know why? You're doing the same thing. You know, the biggest example that you've seen over the years of you doing speaking events, you know, going back several years, is we've had some speaking events in the past where uh, bring a friend, save $10. Yeah, share the video at the end of this. Well, yeah, yeah or bring, whatever. bring a friend to the talk and, right, and, right. and save $10 when you both come. Right. Hardly anybody brings a friend. Never. They'd rather pay the extra $10 to not let anybody know how where they feel. And where they're going. Right. Okay. Including their own families. Right. So in, in along with what the guys just told Stacy, yeah. her last part of her question was, um, she has anxiety about finding a romantic uh, uh, friend and other close friends. Well, I think once you keep you tell it, you open up and you tell people how you really are, who you really are, that they will open up and tell you who they really are. Yeah, and that's how you find close it's friends. The biggest kept secret. Yeah, it's a secret that everybody has agreed and abide to. To, to, to you know to stay safe it's this part of you that's that, that that real part of you that's terrified to come into this world where they're they're all ready to pounce on that you know <laughs> you know what you guys need to do you need to do what i'm doing right now i wrote guided i came out i told my story whoa i didn't even realize that action the reaction i would get from writing this book it's been incredible. I've sold hundreds of thousands of copies of this book. Unbeknownst to me, I never, ever thought that there were so many people that aligned with this. So you guys, this is the silent majority. You guys need to start coming out, trusting yourself. And you know what you're going to find out? You're going to find out you should have done this a long time ago. You're going to find out that you're not alone and you're no reason to be lonely. There's no reason for it. It's just that you guys have been like a steel trap, keeping this secret because it's been so precious to you. You don't want anyone messing it up. They can't mess it up. If you're strong in, in, your, in your spirituality, you're strong in what you know. You've done You've reinforced this by writing down what you know, what's going on with you, what's unusual and out of the ordinary mm -hmm. every day. If you keep doing this, you will not take it personally if somebody doesn't align with you. You, you will not have the trauma around it. You will, it will not close you down again. You will continue to be who you are. Yeah, you tell people who you, you are, you'd be safe. surprised how many of them come back and want to know more about it's you. That's amazing. I, I can only tell you that I was blown away. I, when I published Guided, I was like, holy shit, what am I thinking? <laughs> this is a radical book. Okay, I mean, I laid it down. I exposed myself, okay? You guys, if it, it was a leap of faith, but you know what? I was. It was. It went on for so long, this whatever all the things that happened in my life, that it was time to, 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 it was my duty as a human being on this planet to share what I know and how I learned it. It was my duty, okay? So you know what? It's your duty to yourself, to humanity. It's your gift. It's the best part of you that you have to share. Stop hiding it. Tell your story. Tell, yes, and the way you're going to tell, start telling your story is to yourself. You're yeah. going to start. That's what I'm telling you. Tell this, yourself first. This is how I did it. When I was seven, when I was growing up, when I was in my adult life, I kept journaling what was going on with me so I was clear about what, what was going on. All right? This is how you're going to get strong. You're going to not wobble as you're moving through. You're going to be strong, okay, in your power. And the more stable you are about being who you are and not hiding it anymore, People will admire you. You're not going to believe it, but it's time to come out of that shell and stop doing that. And you can no longer say that. And by the way, you'll get rid of all the slugs. Whoever doesn't fit, boom, you have, will have identified them. If they, you know, have an issue with you or whatever, just say, oh, check them off the list. They're, they'll never be in, in, 
in my life. I will never even consider them. It eliminates all the garbage. Okay? It eliminates the people that didn't like you in the first place. Right. That's right. Because you've got nothing to lose. They don't like you now. Right. So you may as well just get them clean with it. Make them get clean with it. And now you're clear on it. No more guesswork. Yeah. Okay? No more anxiety about your future. No more anxiety. No more guessing. Right. You took the game out of it. Okay? Do you guys feel this? All right. Patty Friedman. She has anxiety because her husband developed epilepsy this year, and his seizures are intense. They're under control now, but she's anxious about them returning. It makes it hard to sleep, you know, in the same room. Right. Like it, it does, it does. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, Patty, yep. there are no accidents. Right. I know this sounds insane. Okay, when you lay it against just being in this world, if we're just in this world, you could argue with that, okay? You could really argue with that. But when you're not just in this world, when you are in one piece, when you have returned, okay, and now you're in this together, and now you're, you're living this world in a co-creation type of way where you're not disconnected, you're connected, you're going to see what's under the hood, what's really going on. Okay, let's do something for you. Give me a second. I'm going to pull something out. Yeah, pull the Epilepsy. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, but, yep. Here, Ray. Take a look at that, baby. Okay. I was thinking the same thing. Were you really? Oh, well, you know, you, I love this guy. I, see, I can't have a private thought. When, when, when you are with the right person, when you <laughs> find the right person, it's because you were straight up about who you were. And Ray... When I met Ray, I man, I was so into this. I was totally into it, and nobody could have I could have connected with nobody unless they were right in line with me, just like Ray is. Okay, so be who you are. All right. So the spiritual uh, side of epilepsy is sense of persecution. The person has a sense of persecution, reject rejection of life, a feeling of great struggle in the past in their life and self-violence and the uh, that's that the epilepsy is that is like you see him throbbing you know like right. this so it, it 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 when you see it it that's what it's representing it's frightening I, i've been around people with, with me too epilepsy um i choose to see life as this is the the mantra uh, uh, like, well this is the resolution well, that yeah i choose to see life as eternal and joyous i am eternal and joyous and at peace so so this is this is Louise Hayes' book on healing your life. You guys, this is a wonderful book about understanding what's going on. Like I'm telling you, Patty, that there are no accidents, and you you, you just need to look under the hood, pay attention to what's going on, um, pay and and see why is this in Patty's life. That's what I want to know. Okay, so let's let your guides talk to you about why is it that you need to see this. What's that about? Okay, let's do this. It's a way you will be able to help your husband. Now he's the one that has it, right? right. It's important that you realize that you are anxious over something you cannot control. Right. That is the first thing. Admit to yourself that whatever you do, you can't control the way he feels about his past that is now manifesting itself with this epilepsy. You can only sympathize with the situation and create an environment that makes him forget about what triggers it. The trauma that, that caused it. Right. And what was the resolve again? Do you remember what it said? Um, 
Well, being being around somebody, I, I know what, what's I've been around. Go back to people. the result. The result. The, the result. What what's the result? So there's the there's the issue, the health issue, and then there's the result. Okay, that she talks about. And Ray's going to read the, the uh, resolution to this. The what what you would encourage to, and remind him, so he doesn't stay stuck in that energy. Yeah, see life as eternal and joyous, and tell him to to repeat that he is eternal and joyous and at peace. Eternal and joyous and at peace. Let's talk about that for a minute. Eternal. Okay, let me use that one and say that this life is not all there is. This situation, this epilepsy, is temporary okay even if he has it for the rest of his life this isn't the rest of him when we are released from this world this is a continuum we it's a cycle it keeps repeating and coming back around so we can get it so we can align with ourselves so we can be who we are so we can learn who that is okay and be whole that's what this whole journey is for all of us so your husband he's got something crossed up doesn't he patty and you're with him you want to know why you're with him because you need to learn how to be a healer how about that one you are with him to learn how to bring out the best in you when you see this issue that this person's having without taking it personally without letting it traumatize you, without making you anxious, okay? Without trying to control something, you can't. You can't control it. Your only, your only way to, to involve yourself, okay, with this, is to learn how to remind him of what Ray said in the resolve. Remind him, all right? and help him heal it and write down how you're doing with it as you move through it he doesn't have to see what you're writing down but you need to track how you're doing with this because the message in it for you is what you really need to know okay okay oh this is a good one barbara ann barbara ann says this sums me up anxiety and fear one aspect for me is that i need to jump back into the job market but my last job was a nightmare. Ooh, I've had a couple of those. Literally. Wow. I had co-workers that committed suicide. Wow. And others went to prison. Plus, the office was in an old hospital. This was a state government job. Hard to imagine going back into that world, so I stay stuck on the outside. It does, do, you, uh, does, do you think she still has the job, Ray? No. Okay. So she stays stuck on the outside. Is that how she said it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. It's hard not to blame me on that one. That was a <laughs> real test. Okay. It was. Did you hear me use the word was, past tense was? The only thing that makes it an is, is that you hang on to the old energy, that time capsule, that frozen energy that keeps you stuck in that past. Okay. So that's what we need to, it's like, a, it's like a barge coming through the big thick, 30 feet thick ice that has to break that ice up. Okay, come back here, Ray. Let's have, let our guides talk to her. So we need to find out how, say her first name to me. It's Barbara. Yeah, it's Bar Barbara. Oh, lost the picture. Barbara Ann. Okay, Barbara Ann, this is about um, you... Getting back into the, the, the job oh, market. Okay, getting back into the job market and how you have an energy field when you walk back into the job market that doesn't invite that back in. Right. Okay, <clears throat> here they go. We see that you have difficulty with moving forward with a job decision first we want you to write down all the types of jobs that you don't want and 
y. Next, look at what you would like to do and write that down. Not only write down what you would like to do, but what you know you would be good at. Like to do it and good at it. And then start looking for a job. You will approach those interviews without dragging the negative energy of your past job with you. That's how you're going to do it. By writing it down, and re it will reinforce and make you clear. Not anxious, but whew, make you clear about what you're going to do and what you're going to seek out instead of being tense and scared and and resistant mostly on guard looking for a problem okay cat says thank you that was so help very helpful i think it will really help me to write down each traumatic experience and look at it thinking about the lesson rather than taking it personally oh yes it didn't. That's always what it is, you the guys. The key word is it didn't happen to you. It happened for, for you. you. And, and it's hard to imagine that, but you will see it. The only way you're going to see that that's true is as you write it down and you see it on the pages. It's evidence. It's the truth. It never moves off the page. It's finally still. It's right there. Okay. And when you need to go back, when you start slipping back into it, you open your journal back up and, and look at that entry or then the one that followed that and the one that followed that and that. And then you start to re recover yourself again. So you don't, you stop repeating what you used to do, slipping back into it again. All right. Because these are stubborn issues. And until you do this, well, that's, it will not stop. Okay. Patty said, thank you so much. He is crossed up. Yeah, yes, he is crossed up, you know, in the past. And, right, right. And, you know, what? once you can figure out what that is and address it, the symptoms will stop. There's a spiritual solution. If he, if you can get through to him. Right. Now, here, here's what I want you to realize, Patty, is you have, you know, you, this is your husband. Okay. You know, you, you love him and you want, don't want him to hurt like this. Okay, but you know, there's life just doesn't work out like the fairy tale book, you guys. It it's a lie. That fairy tale book lied to us. Okay, it didn't tell us the truth about what's really going on in this world and mm -hmm. and what our part is in it. I want you to stay focused on what your part. Come back here, Ray. I, I got to talk to Patty again. I mean, the guides have to uh, about this. Patty's part in this. There's an issue about the epilepsy with the husband, but what is Patty, Patty's part in it? Why is this happening in Patty's life? What's the point here? It's to show you that you are a healer yourself. There you go. I, and? And that by helping People identify where they're stuck and helping them to release it, you can change their lives. Okay. Bring me that book back for a minute, Ray. Okay. Okay. I'm going to point this up at her. And Patty, you want to get this book and get it in the paperback, okay? Um, Louise Hay, you can heal your life, all right? And when you get this book, what you're going to... You know, she in the beginning, she writes, she explains how it works, right, in the beginning. But then when you get near the end of it, this is the juicy part. Uh, it, it starts to read like this. And it, it gives you what the, let me see what they, they call this, the way I can stay with her format, all right? They give you the, let me see where it starts. Back at A. 
Yeah, it's all okay. alphabetical. Yeah, she should have put it at the top of every page. Uh, that's right. Louise Hay, you should have done that. Okay, at the top, it talks about, first it talks about the what, Ray? This column talks about. That's the problem. And what's this one? The probable cause of the problem. And? And the new thought pattern has to be developed to eliminate the problem. You need this book. You, you guys should all have this book, okay? But right now, Patty, this is a this is a very important thing for you to do, to get this book, because you are a healer, and if you want to know how to heal these people, you need to educate yourself on on what this is. This is right. a fantastic book. It is. Yeah, and this will keep you from taking it personally again. It's not your fault. You didn't do this. Nothing didn't, happened to you. No, and it didn't happen to him. Right. This is a it, life is is about healing us, not hurting us. You guys, okay. Mm. Okay, Barbara Anses, thank you all for this help. I will start writing. I had hoped to turn a more creative aspect of work. Uh, I am a film major. Blessings to you both for all the help that you give out. You got. You are great. Share the video. Share this with your friends. Let your friends know we're here on Tuesday nights, all right, to help them with whatever we're, the theme is for that night. Linda's Weekly Guided Insights on my website, lindadeer.com. It's right at the top of the page. Tell them to sign up, get the insights, and join us on Tuesday, and they'll be in sync with what we're doing, all right? Yeah. It's, it's, but, kind of, it's kind of like you have to dare yourself to tell people who you really you've are. You've got to step out of this, you guys. You're, you're missing your life by not doing it, all right? Get the journal. Make sure you get my guided journey and start using it, all right? Yeah. Right. It's kind of like when you look at your friends who you probably had for a long time, and, and you look at them, and you're a spiritual person, you're on a, uh, an awakening journey, and they're not. They're the furthest, furthest thing from it. And you're afraid to be different than them. You, you're afraid that if you told them how you really felt, how you think, and, and what you thought about how they're living their lives, that they would just not want you to hang around with them anymore. So by not telling them who you really are, that's what prevents you from finding uh, the right romance that with someone who is, is. is like you, to find all these new friends who are like you, Right. You've got the door locked. Right. They're never going to find you. If you keep hiding, you can't do that. Okay, that's not allowed. And I say it's not allowed because what it's going to cost you, it's going to cost you, listen to this, it's going to cost you your life. Right. The life that you came here to live, that's what it's going to cost you. That's your life. The one you intended to live, but, but once you got here, you were so traumatized by what happened once you got here that you're like, oh, my God. And, and, and this life, you, it feared you and scared you right out of it. You've been scared ever since, okay? Come out of that. Stop it. Because that's not your life you're living. That's a shadow of you hanging on. That's not a life, you guys. So cut this out and to heck with what people think. The key is to not take it personally anymore. And this is your lifeline. When you do take it personally, write it down. So that the next time, you, if you feel yourself slipping into that, open up the journal and, and read what you wrote earlier about how you did that. How you, and go, uh-huh, I see how I did it. I see why I do these things. Okay, I, I'm beginning to see it. Part That's part three, the journal writing. But part two, when you when you're bold enough and you have enough history in part three where you can see the pattern returning and see it returning and see it returning, then you go to part two and you go, okay, what part of part two do I need to go back to and start doing the work where cleaning up my my early life where this all got implanted into me because it's not who I am. It's what happened here. It's the trauma that I got hit with that knocked me off my my path, okay? And then you, then you really have yourself back. Then you're really solid, okay? And you don't waver anymore. You're conscious. That's what I want to say. And when you are conscious, you are then capable of being fully present, fully present. Imagine that. If you're hiding in the closet, you're not here. You're in the closet. You're hiding. You're not... Being who you are, you're terrified to let anybody know. That's not being present, you guys. And when you're not present, you're not connected. Okay? 
All right. And Veronica says, thank you for all these important truths. <laughs> well, thank you, Veronica. Veronica, it's our pleasure, as always. And you are a darling, darling, darling woman. Look at all those hearts and stuff. I love you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just send some hearts. Yeah, those guys are great. Okay, so Ray, are, are we okay on that panel? We're all set. Okay, we love you guys. And come out every Tuesday, 6 p.m. right here. We're right here. And your guides are right here to help you with this. Okay. So we're going to close the session with their closing message tonight on anxiety about the future. But before we do that, I've got a few announcements. Next Tuesday, November 26, join me right here on my Facebook page, Linda, dear author. This will be the same Q&A and commentary with me and my spirit guides at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So don't miss it. In Linda's Weekly Guided Insights, my spirit guides will be talking about the contentment continuum. Mm. What exactly does the contentment continuum mean? Ask yourself, looking ahead into the new year, will you be content? If so, the next year will not be any different than previous years. This form of contentment is normal for you. That's because other people have convinced you that, like them, you too should feel content. I'm going to read a little bit more on this one, give you guys a little bit more sneak peek on this. Ambitious contentment is very different from just contentment. Ambitious contentment is the urge that drives you forward. Notice we said drives you forward and not keeps you where you are. Okay, are you seeing this? Ambitious contentment suggests that you, you are in the game. You are present. Ambitious contentment means, in relationship to tonight's insight, means that you are so content with yourself and excited about it. You love this, that you can't hold it in. You can't hide in that closet. You can't pretend to be somebody else because you're afraid of what they're going to think or do. Or ooh, ooh, ooh. You're not afraid of any of that. You're too excited to let it in. You can't hold it in. And that's you coming out, living the life you intended before you got here. That is ambitious contentment. Now, mm -hmm. isn't that a difference than regular, the, than just contentment continuum? Just the same old thing. Yeah. How are you today? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And how, how are you today? Uh, good enough. I'm good enough. Okay. You hear it all the time, you guys. They're not fine. <laughs> okay. And they're not good enough. And good enough is never good enough. Right. Okay. Not, if, you're, there's a, there's not if you are in one piece, not if you are connected, okay? And, and you are in ambitious contentment. Don't miss us next Tuesday, okay? Next time somebody asks you, how, how, how are you today? Tell them, Stellar, how are you? <laughs> That'll catch them off guard. That catches them, Ray. Okay, so for those of you who missed my live event on November 9th, that would have been... Two Saturdays ago. Two Saturdays ago. You missed a good one. Yeah, it was really good. Uh, uh, 2019 in Phoenix, Arizona, titled Knowing What to Do and When to Do It. You can get the on-demand replay of the entire event. Just look for the link in the description of this video. Okay, it's only $9.95. And you can replay it as much as you want to. Yep, it's, two okay. hours. it's a two-hour training class. Knock yourself out. Veronica and was there. Veronica Joy was, Joy there. was there. Kathy was there. Kathy, these guys, the superstars. Okay. All right, and um, all right, so uh, I want to say one more thing. Uh, this Thursday, uh, November 12th, at 6 p.m. Pacific time, for those of you who are already members of our private Ask the Universal Channel Facebook group, the students of Ask the Universal Channel will be performing the following. These guys are, this is the same three we just mentioned. Joyous guides will discuss discuss what the meaning 
of making choices that will impact others. So joy is talking about, in fact, this is one of joy's issues, okay? She's constantly battling this one. I like how honest they are about all this. And their guides came through with these, with these topics they're going to talk about. But this happens to be something that Joy um, uh, battles, I guess, I, the way I'd say it uh, all the time, is about when she does uh, discuss what is meaningful or, or uh, what is the meaning of making choices that will impact others. So she's worried about the choices that she makes. How will it affect somebody else? Okay, you know, I want to make sure it's not going to hurt somebody else. She's an awesome woman. But she cares about people. But you know what? We get carried away with that. We have to find out where that, where that line is and what makes sense. And the guides are going to talk about that in her session. That's going to be really interesting. Kathy's guides want to talk about how we make our own life with our thoughts and she's that's the guides talking in other words how how do you go through your life while receiving the thoughts from your spirit guides and angels and instigate or interplay that with with what you think what you what you had in mind and then let that come through and then and then size it up and you know what and write it down okay now you've got it written down you've got the history you've got the proof the evidence it's documented you can't miss it there it is every time you need it okay that's how you're going to do that but kathy's guides are going to talk about how they how they the spirit guides and you co-create a life veronica's guides will be talking about when being present is a challenge we all need to hear about that. How do you stay present? How do, how do you get present when you don't feel like you are present when you're having a struggle with it? All right. And this event will be hosted by Linda Deer and Ray Holly. Look for the instructions on how to join this private group in the description of this video. I've got a little typo there. Uh, needs a tough fix. Okay. Okay, so that's what we're doing, and we are going to do the closing message for tonight's event about anxiety about the future. Great session, you guys. Mm -hmm. Love your questions. Bring those questions on Tuesday, and let your guides talk to you, and let us talk to you. Okay, and here they go. In most cases your anxiety about the future is rooted in your past. Go back and look at a time when you were anxious about the same thing. What happened in the past that you worried about so much? Many times, what happened worked out just fine. But you think it'll be different this time. So you worry without any cause. Stop doing that. What happened and the way it happened will probably repeat itself many more times. Now, we want you to start making new friends who are like you, who are on a spiritual journey like you. And here's how you stop hiding. Stop agreeing with people that you don't want to agree with. Ooh, 
that is a trap. That keep that. Now you sold out. When you let yourself agree with somebody that you don't agree with, that you don't agree with it. Do not sell yourself out like that. The minute you do that, oh my God, come back home and write down what you did so you can see it on the page. You can see it. There's the evidence, the proof. It actually did happen. It's the truth. You need to write your truth down. You need to talk about how that felt to do that. And once you do that, you're going to realize something that you never realized before. And only then are you going to be able to take the action to not do it the next time. Okay, but there'll be no defense against it. You will keep doing it and doing it and doing it. It's called a knee-jerk response. You're used to responding, not reacting, not res not responding. Okay, you're used to jumping to conclusions. Like it's all, it's almost like being in a conversation where you have to you have to say something. Okay, you you just feel like you have to. You don't have to do any of that. You just here's what you need to do. <sighs> Sit back, breathe. Loosen up your upper back and, and your upper shoulders and your neck and just enjoy the conversations and let them do the talking. Huh. Think about it this way. Let them do the work. And then when you see it all start to play out and, you know, you'll feel the time when you're going to make a contribution. All right. And, and you know what, you guys, you need to do this. You need to step out of your fear of being who you are. You need to start stepping out. You need to start putting it out there. And if they all laugh at you, then you're done with them. Yeah, those people are all looking for approval of what their opinion is or how they feel. And you're not, you don't necessarily always approve of how other people want you to be like them. So the, one way to stop them in their tracks and to stop agreeing with them is to say, well, that's an interesting way to look at that. I don't agree with it, but that's an interesting way to look at it and walk away. But don't agree with it. Right. Do okay. not agree with Do, it. If, 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 and what Ray said is, you can say, well, that's an interesting th way to look at it. And just leave it right there. You don't even have to say that you don't agree with it. It doesn't, what do, they don't even care if you don't agree with it. Yeah, because tell, they're so invested in what they think. They don't really care. You know, but, but if you do it like that, you haven't, you haven't sold out. Don't sell out. Yeah. Don't don't ever let yourself do that again, you guys, because the minute you do that, you what sellout means is that you sold yourself short again. Right. And and it's a habit. It's a habit. You come home, you get the journal out, and you have that 15 minutes, and you write the truth down. And you just keep you keep score on yourself, and you guys, your life's gonna clean up so fast, you're not gonna believe it. All right. This you're, this is what's gonna stop it. All right. That's right. You guys, we love you guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Once you can do that, you can turn around and walk away with a smile on your face. And really at peace. You haven't right. hurt anybody. You're not out to, to, to punish anybody, get even with anybody, attack anybody. But you're not walking around with this energy of, of defensiveness, of, of, you know, where you're rigid and you're ready to fight. And, you know, you don't need to do that. You're fine. You don't need, you don't, you're not going to do that. Be yourself. You're just gonna you're gonna come out of that cocoon, out of that hiding spot, that hiding place, and you're gonna stop letting life run you, life take your life, okay? And you you are gonna start living the life you intended because you are present. Okay. All right. We will see you guys next week. And maybe maybe Thursday. Maybe Thursday. On Ask the Universal Channel. Group. If you want to join the group, the link to grow, join that group is up in the description. Right. So you can just feel free to email us, and Ray will send you the qualifying the qualifier to get in. Right. All right. All right. You guys. Be present. Be strong, everybody. And be yourself. That's it.